Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the best way to store files in your Rails app. So this includes things like images, videos, audios, just any type of file that you need to store. I'm gonna show you the best way to do it and also a few tips and tricks to do this. So yeah, I hope you guys are excited and let's get right into the video. Hello everybody, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to handle file uploads and storage in your rails application so in this video i'm going to cover using the active storage framework which is built in with rails and it's a whole file storage solution uh, for ruby on rails now this is only for uploading and accessing the files you're still going to need a place to store your files so once you deploy to production and you're in like a real environment you want to integrate with something like AWS and with an S3 bucket to store all of your items from your app. But for development, uh, Rails uh, default just saves it to the disk. So you can still practice using file uploads and just have it stored locally. But just be aware that once you do deploy it, you're going to want to want to sign up for something like S3 which is object storage, and then you'd have all your items stored in the cloud and your app would be able to easily access them. All right, to get started, let's create a new app. So I'm gonna open the terminal. And then make sure you already have Ruby on Rails installed and everything. You can check that quickly by typing Rails-V. So you'll see I'm on Rails 7.1. And that's perfect. So from here, let's create our new app. So I'll do that by typing the Rails new command. And I'll just call this file upload test. And from here, I'm also gonna set some additional options on this generator. You don't have to, but uh, dash D for PostgreSQL's database. Now this won't affect your files at all. It's totally different. This is just for storing the actual data. And then dash C for Tailwind as the CSS framework. Now after we do that, we can run the installer and this will generate everything for our new app. All right, now that that's set up, we can CD into this app. And then I can just go ahead and start the server with bin slash dev, make sure everything's working. So you'll see that it says it's listening on port 3000 and the server is currently running. So to view this, we can just go in the browser and go over to localhost colon 3000. And then we see this little error here because the database needs to get created, but there's a nice helpful button here. You can click create database. If that doesn't work, then do it from the console. So it's really actually, this is like a common command that you have to run in Rails, something like Rails DB create to create the database. And that would also work. Now you'll notice right now that everything is working. Oh, I think I closed out of that tab. So everything's working. We see the Rails logo, but now I wanna set my own custom page. So the way that you do that is you have to set the root of the application. So let's quickly do that. But since this video is all about file storage, we're gonna need a model to store the files on. So let's also work on that. So I think I'm gonna create a new model called a post model. And then I'll just use that to store some files, maybe like an image and a video and whatever else we wanna store. So let's create that new model. And by using a scaffold, it's also gonna create all the views for us. So we're gonna have a fully working app set up without writing any code. This is pretty awesome. So we can do Rails scaffold post and we'll give it a title and then let's give it an image of type attachment. So this is how you can do it inside of the generator, but you don't have to do this. It's also really easy to add new attachments. So I'll show you. So if we just scaffold like this, it's gonna create the post model. It's gonna give a title. And then if we look inside of the migration, so the first thing it created was a migration, which is gonna update 
the database. And if we look in here, all it's doing is it's creating a table, a post table, and it's adding uh, the title and then timestamps, of course, but that's by default. But I don't see anything about the image, right? So the image isn't stored here. Yeah, it's not stored there. It's actually stored on its own table. And we don't even have that yet. So right now, we don't have an image model. Even if we, so let's migrate the database. And then let's go into the Rails console. All right, and let's just say like post.new, post.new.image. Let's try to do it. And let's try to like, dot attach. <laughs> Can we even do this? No. <laughs> like, what the heck? No, actually, so yeah, we already get the error. Undefined table, active storage blobs does not exist. So by default, uh, active storage isn't installed in your Rails app, but it's really simple to install it. So it's just one command, Rails active underscore storage colon install. If we run that, you'll see it copies this migration. And then, okay, so let's say we want to see what that migration is Oops. You, oh right. <clears throat> it's not migration it's migrate so look at this active storage migration it's pretty big so it actually adds a few different tables as active storage blob table with all these different fields that end up being used like the, the file name Content type would be the type of file. So is it an image? Is it a video? And then metadata also is used to store some information about the file. Like for audios, they have the duration and like other things like that. Then there's another one. So there's active storage blobs and there's active storage attachments, active storage variant records. So it's pretty interesting. And now what this does is I'm pretty sure that so the active storage attachment is the actual like attachment that you get stored. So something like the image. That's why it has a string of name. It also has the record and it has the blob. But the blob is the actual file. So this has all of the information about the file itself. And you'll be able to access the blob and you'll be able to access the attachment once we upload. Then down here in the variant records, that's whenever you're doing like you're changing the file to display like a preview. I guess apparently they store it in the database to make it a little bit easier. So that's really cool. All right, so let's go and try to upload our first file. So we've created the post model, we've added active storage, so we should be all good to go. From here, the only thing we need to do is start the server. And also we need to change the route because we're still just going to the rail screen when we go to our app. Oh, also, we had a pending migration for active storage, so I'm going to run that. But yeah, see, we're still just looking at the Rails screen. So I want to quickly set the root. So I'm going to go ahead and open the code now in my code editor, which I'm using Visual Studio Code Editor. I'm going to go ahead and open this code. Shoot, what do I call it? File upload test. Let's open this. Yes, I trust the author. And then inside of here, to set the root, we just go in the config, routes.rb. So these are where all of our routes in our application are defined. If you don't know what routes are, they're like in the URL. Every URL is gonna to map to something and that's what the routes are for. So right here, because we have resources posts, it means we actually have a post slash, like a slash post page, which would be the post index. And then we also have a new page and all this was added by the scaffold. But we don't have a root page, which is like the main website. So let's make the post the root and actually there already is a root down here going to post index so all we have to do is uncomment that oops so delete the delete the hashtag delete the pound sign and then we just have the root you'll see that it gets highlighted so that's how you know it's going to be ran and then when we reload we'll see that our root is now the post index just like we set inside of the red star b so from here we can go and upload a new post i just be like or how about I say like my dog, because I know I have a good dog picture. And let's go in downloads. All right, here's my dog. We're gonna create post. 
And now everything should have actually worked really smoothly. So if we look in the console real quickly, okay, we'll see our initial post. So this is when we uh, cr when we press like the submit button, it made a post request to the post controllers create action. And you'll see that it included the title and then it also included the image, but the image was set to this like local uploaded file and then it has a temp file too. So this is kind of how it we pass the file to active storage by default. There is other ways we can do this though. There's a thing called direct upload, which I might get to into later in this video. But let's quickly try and display the image. Cause if we go to like the post index or we go to the show page, I see that it, there's a link to the image so I can click on it, but I really want to preview it. So let's try to replace this link with a preview. So let's go in the code. And I'm going to go into the app folder, the views, the posts, and then the underscore post partial. So this is what we're rendering. We're rendering this both in the index. See, so we're rendering posts. And then also in the show page, we're rendering the singular post. So these are both using the post partial to render. So we're going to go inside here. And then right here, this is where the link's being defined. See, it says link to the file name, and then it's just basically just going to the image. We're gonna replace this with, uh, well, since it's the image, let's replace it with the image tag. And then inside of here, we'll add the post.image. But let's only show this if post.image.attached. Because if it's not attached and we try to put it into an image tag, it'll actually throw an error in our app. So that's why we always need to check if it's attached first. And then we re re reload we'll see that uh, we see this cute dog picture, although it's really huge. So I want to quickly resize that. So we can easily resize it using CSS. So if I just add like a, a set width to the image, oh, whoops, now you'll see that it gets updated and now it's like this tiny image. But it's still, the thing is though, it's still rendering the full size, probably like gigantic image yeah if you see this it's 2400 by 3600 pixels 1.6 megabytes which what you have to realize is once you have like images like this loading on your website it's going to slow down a lot and it doesn't make sense why do we need to render a gigantic 4000 pixel image just to show it as a little thumbnail right we don't so where else already has a helper for this They already have something built in that will allow us to create small little previews. So to get the variants to work, we actually need to add this gem for image processing. And then we also need to install a few different things. So first of all is libvips. You need to make sure you have this installed. I guess you also need to add the AWS SDK to allow this to work also. So we'll get to this when we try to deploy this app to production. But real quickly, I wanna do the previews. So, oh, right here, perfect. So we could do something like this to add a preview. Calling dot variant. Uh, so let's do this. So apparently to add a variant, you just add a block to that has one attached. So we haven't got to that part yet. Let's go back into code and Go over to the app models and the post model. So this was our post model. And remember how in the migration, the image wasn't on the post model? Well, because it has its own database table for the active storage. So all you need to do is say has one attached and then set the image. And we can have as many as these as we want. So we can have has one attached video. We can have has one attached audio. Like it can be anything. Has one attached PDF. This is how you add uh, files to your app and then you can also do has many so we'll get to that so instead of has one has many and then we probably want to do like a plural videos or images and then this would allow us to have multiple saved in on one attribute all right so let's let's try to do that variant thing so it looks like you just add a block and then 
we use this attachable and inside of here we're able to define a variant you'll see I'm defining a variant thumb which is going to resize to 100 by 100 and now inside of the show page uh, so instead of saying post.image we say post.image dot variant and then we pass in the thumb option and let's see how this works so I'll reload and actually we don't see anything so I'm wondering if there was an issue uh, with my tools let's see let's try to see what happened so it looks like there's an error accessing the file so let's look in the console it looks like there is an error okay it says generating image variants requires the image processing gem okay got it so all we have to do is add image processing to our gem file I'll, I'll just stop the server open up the code so this is just for the variants by the way to use the regular active storage you don't need to have this gem but it's pretty easy all we have to do is just literally add it to the gem file image processing gem come back to the terminal run bundle and then we should be good to go if I do bin slash dev let's go back to localhost 3000 whoops interestingly enough I still don't see it so we're getting the same error oh let's go into the console so it actually says now we just need the library VIP so that's what I was thinking we don't have VIPs um, we need to quickly install that let's see what's happening because all my for some reason all my tabs are over here all right wait so how do we do how do we install the vips framework dependency live by vips or image magic let's just look up install image magic on ubuntu Oh, I guess it's this, yeah, but it's this easy. So all we have to do is go in the console, run sudo apt install image magic. Put in our password. And that should install everything we need for image magic to make our resizable variants work with active storage. All right, it looks like everything's set up. Hopefully I can start the server now and it should work. go refresh oh I'm still seeing an issue come on oh, wait is my server even on wait I'm confused oh it is it's right for some reason the taskbars are unique for both side for both screens it's kind of weird wait so what's the issue now oh it still can't wait so I installed image magic but it still can't find it oh you know what? I think I have to restart my shell because when you install a new framework, like, it doesn't know about it until you restart, I'm guessing. You have to quit out, reopen. Start the server, and maybe it'll work this time. Uh, no, this is so embarrassing. Wait, why isn't it working? It still can't load VIPs. Fuck. All right, how do I install the libvite VIPs? Oh, I guess it's easy too. Just install the standard packages. Wait, so all I need to do is just sudo apt install libvips. All right, so make sure, this is actually important. You need to get libvips if you're gonna use the resizable variants, which will speed up your app a lot. So I think you should use it because there's no reason to render gigantic images if the user has uploaded those. All right, now that we've installed libvips, hopefully everything should be set up. So now I'm gonna finally do bin slash dev and restart and hope that this has fixed the issue. Yes, so we got it. And as you can see, it's obviously resized because this looks terrible. The pixels are like the quality is so bad because I think when you resize a gigantic image, it's gonna always like mess up the pixels. 
So I wonder if there's a better way. Also, we don't even really want it to be we'll resize to limit. Maybe we want a different option. We, we definitely do. Because you see how it's still keeping the original size. I think for a thumbnail, we want it to like center and kind of crop a center image or combine options. Ah, oh, okay. Geez, so what does it support? <laughs> I know I've done this before. Oh, it takes multiple arguments directly. I see. Hmm. So there's no need for combine options. So maybe we can just delete this hash for combine options and then just pass it these two options, gravity and crop. And maybe that will do it. Let's reload. No, still an error. What, it doesn't like gravity and crop? Let's see. Unable to call gravity. You supplied two arguments, but operation needs four. Huh? <laughs> Why does it need four? All right, I'm gonna add a. Uh, I'm gonna add a comment. So what's the four arguments? That's what I'm confused about. Okay, so there's resize to fill and then resize to fit. Oh, so it's actually going over all of the resize to limit. So which one were we using before? Let's just go back to the original one. Okay, resize to limit. So I'm guessing that means that it still preserves the original aspect ratio. Downsize the image to fit within the specified dimensions while retaining the original. Okay, perfect. Resize to fit is actually resize the image to fit while maintaining the... Okay, okay, got you. Resize to fill while retaining... If necessary, we'll crop the image. Okay, that's what we want then. Resize to fill. So like, all we have to do is change this resize to limit to resize to fill. And hopefully that'll auto the image yes it does so perfect just like that that's all we need to do to create our thumbnail we show the post and maybe actually on the sh on the show page we'll show like a full size image so to do that let's go in the code in the views folder posts and the underscore actually not underscore post let's go to the show page and right underneath where we're rendering the post let's just do an image tag post image and we'll just let it go take up like the full side although we could do variants for everything so we could actually do variant let's do like a large variant why not and then we could go back in here attachable dot variant large and how about instead of resize to fill it's actually the first one resize to the limit and let's do like 1920 by 1080 freaking landscape size but since ours is uh horizontal it shouldn't actually affect that yeah see it definitely doesn't affect it but it just puts us as, as like the regular 1920 by 1080 although i think i might have got the sizes wrong i think first might be hmm. i can't tell which one's first you know is it like is width first or is height first let's see oh there wasn't any difference so i'm probably just gonna do leave it like this so we have a large variant, then we also have a thumbnail variant. And this is the best way to probably do it, just so you can... Uh, it's really about saving the load time in your app. Alright, so now let's talk about when you go to deploy your app to production. How you're going to get that to work. So to get this to work, what we're going to do is we're going to set an Amazon uh, configuration. And we're going to do this inside of the app in the config storage.yml. 
So if you go in there right now, you'll see we have an option for test, we have an option for local. We're also gonna go ahead and add another option, although it's already here basically. So we can uncomment here the Amazon option. The service is gonna be S3. And then we're gonna need an access key ID and a secret uh, access key. So we're gonna get actually all of this information from AWS. So if you don't already have AWS installed, or like, they're not installed, but if you don't have an account, then go create an account. Just look up AWS S3, come here, it's by Amazon. Then we're gonna sign in or create an account. So I'm gonna quickly sign into my account. All right, and then after you're signed in, it'll show you like all your information. We can go over to S3. And then you're gonna have all these different buckets, right? And then to access it, you create a new bucket, choose a region. So you're gonna wanna choose whichever location is closest to where you or your users are. So it'll be easier for you to, to read from it. So for me, my, my server is usually in US East and I guess North Virginia. And then you put a bucket name, just like file upload test, right? And you can leave everything as default. Now we're just gonna go ahead and create the bucket. Oh, bucket names. Oh, bucket names must be unique. Hello. Indigo file upload test. <laughs> right, so we create the bucket. And then now we would use this bucket name too, because this is where our stuff's gonna get stored. See your bucket, we put that here. And the region is right. The only things left is a secret access key and the access key ID. So to get these, you go into AWS and you actually go over here and you go to security credentials. Now I don't want to leak anything. But yeah, I'm not gonna show you that. But basically there's a section access keys. Once you click on that section and then you just go down there and you click create access key. I just don't want to leak it, but there is that button. I'm not lying. I'm telling the truth. Okay. So then once you have these set up, you would put them in your credentials. So to do that, you go into terminal and then first you have to specify an editor. It's like a code editor. You could actually use VS code if you wanted to. And then we do Rails credentials edit and then you specify the environment so for us we'd be setting it would this would be the for the production environment so I'm gonna create a production credentials and then oh <laughs> look it wasn't able to actually open it with um, VS code so let's use Vim you can use Vim or Nano I'm gonna use Vim all right so now that we're opened it Oh, we would add these keys. So we'd have AWS, and then what was it called? Access key ID. We would set this to our access key that we get from AWS. And then the same for the secret access key. Okay, and then once that's set, uh, you'd have everything saved. And then you'd have your Amazon thing configured, but you still need to add uh, the gem. active storage overview so yeah you'll see right here in the in the guides it says you need to specify the active storage service and now we're gonna do this in the production environment because in development we'd want to just be able to test it by storing it locally and not going onto the server but then in production we do want it to store on AWS so to do this we'll go in config environments production the RB and then right here you'll see our active storage service is set to local. We'll change this to Amazon, which is the name that we set in here in the storage.yml. And now it's gonna use Amazon as the provider, but we also need to <coughs> quickly add the gem. I swear there's, yeah, you have to add, let's see, we're gonna need to add the AWS gem. Core features of active storage require the following permissions, S3 list bucket, S3 put object, 
Public access additionally requires S3 put object ACO. So it's saying basically we might need to add these uh, permissions if we already haven't, which I can't remember if I added them when we were creating it. But let's see, it should be good to go. So actually to test this locally, we can actually test this locally by setting the development active storage service to Amazon. Now, I didn't actually set those keys. But let me go and set my real keys and then these sh this should just work fine. All right, so I just added my keys in and now I'm thinking I should be able to test if this works. Uh, but the one last thing was adding the gem. Did we add the AWS gem? Gem AWS. I don't think we added it. So let's quickly go to gem file. And I'll just add it right after the image processing. AWS gem. Go back, make sure to bundle in the console to, so it'll install the gem. And wow, look, it <laughs> installed a bunch of stuff for AWS. So that's fine. Then we'll restart the server. And let's test this out. So when we restart, we still see this dog. So let's go ahead and delete this. I'll destroy this dog post. And I want to try again to see... So in our development RB, like it says this the storage is Amazon, so it should actually be trying to store this on Amazon. So I'm gonna see. Let's create a new post. Let's just use any image. Create post. Oh, unable to sign request without credential set. Access key ID. Oh, I see. <clears throat> yeah, so actually remember how I told you how to set the Credentials. I did it for the production environment, but I'm trying to test it in development, of course. So I need to set my keys in the. See, so basically, instead of production, I need to also set them in development since that's where I'm trying to test it right now. So see, inside of here, there's nothing in development, so I'm going to quickly add basically the same thing as here, except for with my tokens. All right, so I added my secret key and the access key. Now I'm gonna try to try this again. All right, so we do have a post, but the image did not get uploaded correctly. So let's try to do it this time. Create the post, and just like that, it's working. And then if we go actually to like our AWS S3 bucket, we should see that our file is uploaded there. Go over here, S3. Go to my file upload test. And, well, actually, we have a few different files that got uploaded, interestingly enough. Because I think I think what it does is it stores the variants in the bucket, too. So see how some of them are bigger? Like, this is probably the large one. Or no, this is probably, like, the default. Then this one's the large one. And this one's the thumbnail. And see how it stores them all in active storage. But it's going to only do that one time. And then these are your files and I could create as many posts as I want with my images and they will be stored. So this is already like ready to go to production or ready to release this. Oh, I like that too, how it almost looks like it loads it when it's ready. So it might be like uploading and then as soon as it has the file, it, it shows it. I like that. Or I don't know if that's just like loading. I think it's the variant actually. So it has to load the variant and then it's able to display it. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something new about active storage. You now know how to set up active storage in your Rails app and then also deploy it to production and have all your files get stored in this nice S3 bucket. This could also work with any different provider. So there's also, see there's the option to connect to DigitalOcean, Azure, Google Cloud Storage Service, there's already docs, and I'm sure any other service provider too would work. See, you could do, you could have multiple different storage blocks. You can really do anything. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and come back because I'm gonna be creating a lot of more videos and a lot more content about Ruby on Rails and web development in general.